Iggy Azalea is not happy about her comeback. Fans of Sandy Denton are concerned. Fans of Blackish and Fresh Off the Boat are calling out ABC. Lord learns a huge lesson. And we have our photo of the week and more, so stay tuned. Welcome to What's the 4 and one your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. I'm Kizzy Cox. I'm Onika McLean. Hey. Hello, my darling. How you doing? Yes. Hey, guys. All right, so let's get started with some quick takes. So, Chrissy Teigen was apparently in shock after hearing that rapper Cardi B offered a threesome with Rihanna on the She Bad track from her debut studio album, Invasion of Privacy. Well, if you're going to have a threesome, you should invite Rihanna. That's the one. And okay. Cardi is pregnant, so maybe she's just trying to help Amigos out. I'm just saying. <laughs> but singer-songwriter, Lord, let, let me tell you what's happening, right? right. So I know the, the internet kind of blew up a little bit on this, right? So this is what she did. She posted uh, a, t- a picture of a tub filled mm-hmm. with water, mm-hmm. and it said, quote, I'll always love you. The internet lost their minds, wow. honey. They were like, really? what? Oh, my God. They went crazy. So she later apologized on her Insta story. But why would, what was she even thinking? Like, why would she even She was talking like about Whitney Houston. Like, Whitney Houston died in the tub. But why would she think that was okay maybe she to was, do? Maybe she was high. I it mean, was allegedly. Very, she probably was. I don't know. Very not tasteless. Sure. But Sorry, also, Lord. Kendra and Hank. Do you, you know Kendra? Mm-hmm. The, the ex, yes. Um, Playboy housemate. Yes. She's filed for divorce. Hmm. Yeah. So there's okay. no more Kendra and Hank. I don't know what's going on, but um, we can watch it. Did you, did you watch that show any? No. Okay. No. I did. I did. Mm-hmm. And you didn't like her. They, you didn't like them together. They were always, they were like a, a, a slow train wreck. You know, like you knew it wasn't going <laughs> to work out. It was just like her mother was always in it. She was a Playboy. He was a, a NFL star. Like it just... It just, you know what their relationship felt like to me? What? Um, uh, don't be tardy for the party. The, the oh, housewife. Yeah. What was her name? I um, forgot her name, but yeah, I know who you're talking about. The white housewife. The white housewife. <laughs> she's so racist, guys. But she's the only white Atlanta housewife. <laughs> this is the truth. Her name's Kim Devoziak or something like that. The, yeah. You know I'm Kim. Koziak. Koziak. See? Oh, Who's right. racist now? I remember her name. Kim Koziak, yes. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so uh, on to the next story, which was, this shocked me. Um, rapper Fabulous, you know him? Like, uh-huh, you know, uh-huh. like, Fabulous. Yes, Fabo, was recently charged with aggravated sexual, that's, excuse me, aggravated assault against his baby's mother and longtime partner, Emily Bustamante. And she actually accused the rapper of hitting her so hard seven times that she, he knocked out two of her front teeth and attacked her father, came after her father with a knife. So I'm like, what? Fabulous, really? Wow. 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 That makes me think that but why didn't she, the first time. The, the, he hit her seven times, she couldn't run the first time? Like, okay. Ni- Onika, no. no. Seven <laughs> times is a lot of times. That's a, that's a lot, and he really... Is he in, he's in jail now, right? No. No, he's not in jail. No, no, no. Okay. No, Domestic he's not violence in jail. is and a serious thing. Like, come on, Fabo, you know not to hit... You know, yeah, um, that's uh, terrible. Speaking of beefing, right? Kenya mm-hmm. Moore, aka Prego, we still trying to figure that out. And Vivica Fox, aka, a, um, she's still not over 50 Cent, yeah. Hard, hard face. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what? You, Viva, come well, on now. Okay. Vivica's from the hood too. She'll mess you up. Don't play. I don't know. I don't, don't know play. why you keep saying that. It won't happen. Don't play. It won't, don't it play. won't happen. <laughs> They're feuding again. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. saying. And wait, wait. And then, so this is like, it's just a crazy time. Because so burglars tried to like break into Viola Davis's house. They tried to get away with burglary? Ah! They tried to get away with burglar. You got to say it messed up like Jay-Z. No. You got, no, you can't say burglary. You got to say burglar. No, they tried to get away with burglary. Yes, well, I heard her okay. husband slept. Oh, Julian, I don't know what happened, but yeah. No, but apparently she woke up because they broke in, not downstairs. They broke in through the bedroom where they were sleeping. Oh, t- had a ladder and went up to the balcony mm, mm. and broke she the glass. Like... <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I'm saying Viola does walk like an old slave. I'm sorry, Viola. I'm just. Wow. Does she not? 
I love you, Viola. That's all I, love I got to say. I love her too. That's all I got to say. I don't know what happened here. I don't know okay. what happened here. I don't know what's going on. But yeah. Blue Ivy. So yeah. <laughs> so Blue Ivy, believe it or not, has a personal stylist. A personal stylist. She's As she six. should. She's sick. Her mother is the queen of the universe and her father is the queen of the earth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh, I called him a queen. Oh, I'm just killing everybody. I'm sorry, Jay-Z. No disrespect. I just, king of the earth. King of the earth. Mm. Anyway, Manuel. I'm, I'm going to be afraid of Jay-Z, not the rest of them people. But good. Vivica A. Foss will come for you. Okay, Manuel Mendez is mm -hmm. Beyonce's personal assistant, and now he's also Blue Ivy's stylist and, and personal shopper. She probably asked for it because Blue Ivy... I mean, that is a woman that knows what she wants. You go ahead, Blue Ivy. You hear about her um, um, beating out uh, Tyler Perry in an auction? Sound oh, auction? yeah. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> she's a deep, she's six, but she's a different kind of six. She's like a 46. She's, if Beyonce is your mother, you, you, you gained 40 years. I'm well, she has had this stylist since September 2013, so it has been quite oh, some quite time. Quite some time. Yes. Well, we'll be right back with what's popping. What's popping in relationships, and it's Chris Pratt and Anna Faris. Now, throughout much of their eight-year marriage, they gushed over each other on social media. Fans just ate it up. Mm. I like gush. That's a good word, gushed. And well, that's what they did. But now, <laughs> Faris admits, so don't ignore that, Faris admits that the perfect couple image that they portrayed online wasn't entirely genuine. So my question is, are actors doing like a disservice to the public and particularly their young fans when they post, you know, like fake, no. fake stuff on social fake media? media posts. That's what they're supposed to do. I don't want to hear your problems. So you think social media is about building an image? Social media is about building an image. I cannot believe you just said that. Of course, but I mean, it's about building but sometimes you can. It can be an authentic image. It no, can be a no. form of branding, but it's still in keeping with your authenticity, no, but, but as about, opposed to. But think let me about make it. This fake. Certain things you put out there, you can't take them back. Right. So if it's negative and it, you change, you know, you ever you ever um, send like a nasty email at work, and then as soon as you finish, you just delete the whole thing. Like that's not what happens you in social media. No, you know how people piss you off. You like, fuck <laughs> you, and then and then you turn around and you say, mm, I didn't really okay. take it like that, Bob. It's just a difference. You can't do that with social media because okay. they have like, especially stars. You know, they have those. Um, what is it? Uh, what what you call that? The shade room. Okay, All these yeah, places yeah. that like they they snapshot everything you do, even yeah. when you try to pull it down. We report stories all the time. We're like, and then like she later took it down and. Yeah, and, I mean it exists forever, but I'm just saying, like again, like be inauthentic. No, it's, a social, it's social media. No, but I mean, like even for younger kids, right? Like so, teenagers or whatever who are watching this and thinking they're they're comparing themselves to, oh my God, they have it all together and they have the perfect relationship, and they're developing an unrealistic idea of what this is. But they do the same from thing. That, from teenagers are like, oh man, babe, mm. they do the same Boy, thing. True. Everybody's just faking. Everybody's just fake so why would you bring your real authentic self to a, a, a media okay so you okay so you do not think they're doing it i can't believe she i can't believe she she told the truth at the end that's silly just do the new thing <laughs> just do the new thing the way i said oh we just uh, uh discoupling uncoupling right what they call we it consciously Un uncoupled uncoupled this is this is the world we live in kizzy it is what it is so Dang. Oh so gosh. speaking of You're so um, cynical but i right right. am today yes Maybe in life. I'm, I'm sorry. Anyway, um, <laughs> Roseanne Barr. We have to get on this, this one, right? Now, okay. I am a fan of Roseanne Barr. I watched a couple of the episodes. You look at her. She's doing <laughs> the shade out, right? I'm not, and I liked it, right? But then, when she coming for Blackish on her little show, talking about she slept between, you know, she slept um, right. through black, Blackish and um, off the boat, I was like, okay. Boat, yeah. Like, come on, Roseanne. That's like a little bit ridiculous. But guess what? It's probably a play. She just wants people to start talking about a show, right? A lot of people no, are not No, I think it's just an insensitive joke, which is, you know, that's Roseanne Barr's. That's her whole shtick, right? She's right. insensitive. She's crass. And that's what she did. And mm -hmm. she thought it was fine. And then people were like, hold up. This they is not like, 20 years ago. They were like, stop oh. it. Right, yeah, right. It's a different were... culture. It's a different. And right. because she's a Trump supporter, people are not dealing with her too much any doggone way because, you know, it, they, they just don't like it. But... Right. Right, so now people want are, are coming 
for ABC. Like, because remember when Blackish um, wanted to uh, talk about the NFL and the kneeling and the oh yeah, yeah, we talked that about stuff. that. Yeah, and, a couple weeks and, ago. And, right. and ABC shelved it, and ABC was like, "No way!" Because we don't. What, what do they say? They don't want to. What is it? What is it? What, no, they cause. Didn't. What do they? No, they, they said call, they no. don't want to alienate people. That's the word. They don't want to alienate people, and so that's what Roseanne yeah. is doing. So I don't know. What what are, what are your thoughts on that? I don't know. I mean, it seems like there's a double standard. They you want to boycott mean? Like, ABC. Well, who's who's wanting to boycott ABC? Um, social media. You know, they call that's for not boycott. Gonna, that's not they call happen. for a boy, boycott. Of that's not going to happen. But I think, for me, I'm seeing that there's a double standard. Like, you have, on one side, you have, you know, avowed Trump supporter, Roseanne, in her real life, and also her character, being able to, you know, kind of make light of, you know, racial and ethnic diversity, and that's not cool. And then you have, on the other side, you have Blackish, who... The whole point of the show is to talk about the black experience and you deny the whole kneeling thing because you don't want to be controversial because of what? Well, they said they had um, creative differences, which to me sounds like Kenya Barris wanted to present it and ABC just was like, no, we're not going to touch it. And, you know, that's not fair. If you're going to decide, mm-hmm. right, like mm-hmm. you're not going to air this or not both, air that, make it equal. Universal. Yeah, exactly. Well... Yes. But Roseanne comes, that, that show comes from a time where it's like middle America, white trash. Like, that is the dialogue. Yeah. You know, blackish. I don't, I've never watched uh, Fresh Off the Boat. Such but a good show. Is that it, show is, is really hilar- it's when hilarious. When I say hilarious, I'm, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to binge watch it. It's so good. It is, you are going to laugh and laugh and laugh, especially the grandmother. But Ro- <laughs> Roseanne is being her authentic self. Right? But that's what I'm saying. That's her, right. that's her whole shtick. Like, yeah, crass and sensitive or whatever. But blackish is like more of an elite kind of portrayal of the black experience well yeah it's right? supposed to be an upper so middle class family different. it's a little different yeah but know. but think about cosby's show like 25 years ago it was the same thing like and upper middle class right, and they black. didn't talk about white people and they didn't talk badly about other ethnicities it's true right the cosby show i'm talking about guys right. okay so um yeah no boycott yeah <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> beep 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 okay this is true <laughs> okay yeah. so speaking of I guess unfair. Okay, so Sandy Denton, you remember her <laughs> of Pepper, Salt and Pepper, right? Well, so and Pepper oh, from right. Salt and Pepper. Push right. it, <sighs> right? Push it. That's Trent. That's Trash Baby Mother. Yes. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> oh, what I call Trash Baby Mother? That's hilarious. Sorry. All oh, right, right. So Peppa, you know, she posted a photo of herself in a bathing suit on vacation in Hawaii, and. People came for her. They came hard. They dragged her on social media. I hope because, they didn't drag her on a butt because... Well, that's the thing. That's why it's unfair. Because some people are saying that, that all... That would have ride. Oh, my God. I'm She's sorry, on guys. She's roll today. I'm sorry. J- Shady. It just got dark. Dark. Okay. Super dark. Okay. All right. Kim Kardashian, too, is a bumpy ride. You saw that photo of her. Same thing. Okay, sorry. Well, no, I don't know. But anyway, so if people are saying it's unfair because people are like, look, leave her alone. You know, she got whatever work she had done and leave her alone. And other people are like, look, lady, like you got this big booty now, but your legs don't match. And your thighs are look all sunken in and it just looks crazy. Can you get thigh injections? Because a lot of women have that. It's not just her. I see that all the time. You see these skinny girls with these big, big, big butts and then well, the that's, legs don't match. That's the point. Like she, the, okay, so PSA y'all. How do you do it? PSA y'all. So she knows, she knows. But inje- I got none. If y'all see me in real life, you know I have never gotten butt injections. Unfortunately, I'm not blessed in that They could department. just do a squat. They could do a lot of squats, but good. No. Well, the thing is, there are two types of things, right? You can do the Brazilian butt lift, which is like the butt injections, right? So they take fat out of your various parts of your body, and they inject you. But you have to have enough fat. So I don't know if she decided, okay, I want this big voluptuous booty, and then there was not enough fat left over to adequately plump out her thighs to match. Or there's another thing where you call them butt implants, where you actually take silicone like you would put in your breasts, but now you're putting it in your butt. So they make an incision, they put them up there, and then they close it back up. And so that, depending on what size you get or what have you, that might also look lumpy and bad. I would be so afraid to have somebody cut my butt cheeks open 
to put something in it. It can go very, very wrong. We are going to actually show some pictures of how wrong it, it can, can go. go. Oh, man. Um, yes. Just, well, just our executive watch. producer is shaking her head. Well, I will convince her to put some pictures up. So we, we can we're not showing just, any pictures because we're having a good time here. We are going Cheers. to discourage you guys from getting these bogus butt injections. No, because no, we're not. No, we're no, not. People, Do what you this, want, girls. N- no, are you kidding me? Absolutely not. No, Onika, no. So, okay, so this is what happens when you get, like, illegal butt injections, right? So you go, you know, your homegirl's like, yo, I went to this girl, she in the basement, blah, blah, blah. And you go to the basement, right? And this person is injecting you with God knows what. It can be cement. It can be commercial-grade silicone, which is not supposed to be put in the human body. That's, and that's so, what you put in the wall to cork the, cork the bathtub. <laughs> that's what I'm like, what are you doing? You have a corky ass. <laughs> <laughs> it gets lumpy. Exactly. It gets lumpy. It can get lumpy. It can okay. get hard. So you have, like, hardened patches of chunks of flesh. This is so what much fun. Look, also, she gets can so also excited. Happen. All right. But no, but Don't look, get lumpy. Bump. Okay. And you can also get arthritis, joint pain. You can get infections. You can lose your limbs, man. This has happened. People have lost their limbs. I have not so, seen a girl with a big lumpy butt and no arms. No, no, no. I, I, me. I am going to sh- we are going to show the picture that she got sepsis and she lost her arms, both arms and both legs. And did a man run out on her? Okay. Did she even have a man? But anyway. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> did you not do that. PSA. Cough up the $10,000. Do it the right way. Get your Brazilian Izzy, butt lift and do it, your thing. All right? Izzy, yes. Iggy Azalea. That is Izzy. 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 Iggy? Iggy Azalea. That's your girl or something? No. no. Oh, okay. Iggy, mm-mm. What's going on? Mm-mm. You called her Izzy. I'm like, no, it's Kizzy and then it's Iggy. Oh. Okay. I'm just saying, what are you talking about now? I'm confused. You said Izzy. Iggy. Now Iggy. Yes. Okay. What's up with her? You know. <laughs> Come on. So, so speaking of surgically enhanced, <laughs> me Jesus. the lecherous me women, Jesus. Iggy Azalea is kind of sad, right? Because she's having this really hard time making this comeback. So she released. She got to shut up. Like sometimes she says a little too much. But God. So she, you know, finally released her second album. It's been four years. And, you know, she released this single and this video for this song called Savior with Quavo of Migo. So that was supposed to boost it and everything and it has been it went wood basically. Like it's not But why? Why are they saying it's that? not charting well at why all? Why you guys tell us and comment comment below. Let us know exactly why you guys are not feeling this song. Maybe we should link maybe we should add the link. Well we can do we can definitely do that. Because mm-hmm. I listened to the song and the song is not bad. But she it's said good though. Right. I mean, if you if you're a fan of Iggy Azalea, you would like the song. Okay. So she believes all of sixty fans have streamed the single, and sixty fans is is bad. Is is really bad. So I mean, I think people don't like Iggy Azalea because when she came out, it, you know, you're talking about fake and social media. She came out fake with the accent and everything, trying to sound like this black American from the south, and people were like, "You're from Australia. Like, where is this even coming from?" There's that. Yeah. yeah, and then remember she had the whole beef with Azalea Banks, uh-huh. where Azalea Banks is like, okay, look, this woman came out, she dropped this album, she's got four Grammy nominations, and that shows people, okay, you're a kid watching at home. If you're white, the world is your oyster. You if think it's black, just because she's white? I don't, you know. No, 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 no. I think no, she no, no. Kind, of, kind of just no, no, no. I don't out think. Lane. No, no, no. I don't think just that, wasn't her own lane. Right. I don't think that she, exactly. <laughs> I don't I mean. think it's because she's white. You can't she got keep grannies. that up. No. You can't keep that up, right? Well, you can't. You really can't. Well, she's doing it now. Being, she's doing it now. Oh, she's still. You. She's still do this rapping the same way. Did you hear the single? It's the same. You know, I'm down. You know, acting like she's black and from down south. No. Whereas with Eminem, Eminem, that's how he talks. That's who he is. It's it's real, and it, it came across. Right. You just have to be people. authentic. That's you just have to be your authentic self. Period. That right. She canceled tours when she was at the height of her fame. How you cancel a tour? Like you just started. You got to go through with that. Remember, she broke up with um her dude. Oh, okay. Um, the NBA basketball player Nick Young. Uh-huh. They were together. That was her fiance, and he got his ex pregnant while they were together. Well, that so, happens with the NBA player. Like you acting like that's not something that's an, it's called a break baby, Kizzy. It's called a break. No, baby. no, it's a breakup. So what happened no, was break she, baby. She, oh well, she was supposed to drop the album, and apparently, you know, he maybe fit, she was he, sad. 
Right, exactly. So she said it got her messed up because she was supposed to drop the album. She's talking about this relationship that no longer exists. And so she had to scrap everything and start over. So all of this, I think, just it's, it's a lag. It's too much of a lag and it's kind of having a drag on her. She's yeah. young enough. She'll bring her it back. Career. Our photo of the week is a photo of Sandy Denden, a.k.a. Peppa from Salt and Peppa, and Fergie on Instagram with comments from fans concerned about her new look. I'm Barbara Ballard with What's the 411 Entertainment News and Lifestyle Redefined. And I'm here with the wonderful, the fabulous Dion Clark, the founder of the Harlem Fine Arts Show. Hey, Dion. Hey, it's my pleasure, and, and welcome back to the third annual Harlem Fine Arts Show, where I'm just at the point of getting ready to kick off this, this opening preview. And, and thank you so much for coming and bringing your audience with you. So how does it feel? Three years, man. This is your third year, correct? Yes. Well, we're growing tremendously. I remember we first talked, we talked about 2,000 people coming, and then 3,000. Last year, we had 10,000 people that came through our doors, and this year, we're looking between 15 and 20. It seems like the cultural nutrition of this particular program and our approach is starting to work off, and I'm just so thankful that we can give back to the city of New York like this. I was delighted to have an opportunity to be introduced to Dion. So he is the one who uh, reached out to Wells Fargo to see if we would sponsor this event. And we were delighted to participate. You know, uh, supporting the arts and supporting the community of Harlem is really important to us. We do business in this community. We have a branch up on Lenox and 117th. And, um, you know, part of our vision as a company is to support communities, particularly as it pertains to arts. I call myself a doctor. I'm not an artist. I really consider myself a doctor. And my art is my medication for my patient. So what I'm really doing is I create before the pain slips away. Now, every line means something. This line means stay strong. This line means whatever, you know, peace can only be found inside. You wait for someone else to make you happy, you'll be sad a long time. This may, may mean be you. Don't let nobody... Con uh, tell you that you can't do nothing, you can't make it in life. So every line means something. And then when you see it, it really adds up to, you may say, oh, this is a saxophone player, but really my medication is made so the pill be that you can digest it easier by you thinking that you know what it is. So you don't resist my medication coming into your body and stimulating, inspiring, uplifting. Now you're feeling good and you was like, damn, I was mad a minute ago, now I'm feeling good. Directly behind us is uh, work by Gwendolyn Knight Lawrence, wife of famous Harlem Renaissance artist Jacob Lawrence. And uh, they are both deceased, but this is kind of where they both started, so we are just happy to bring uh, what's part of probably the world's largest collection of uh, work by Jacob Lawrence and Gwendolyn Knight. I've been painting professionally for a little bit over 20 years. I've always um, been, been fascinated with art as a child. Um, I look at art as being a wonderful instrument to communicate. It says nothing but says everything. I mean, it speaks to us politically, socially, culturally, historically, educationally, as well as economically. And, um, you know, you can teach and learn at the same time with art. It just, it is the highest form of intellect. And so I happen to be an artist. I involve myself daily with that. I speak to the power of art the passion and the purpose with art, and that's why I'm here in Harlem at the Harlem Fine Arts Show. 1812 is the first African-American community of free people of color in the continent of the United States, and it happened to be the community of Treme that's in New Orleans, Louisiana. And so you have the mother of our culture right here preserving our treasures. This is the New Orleans African-American Museum, and this is the, um, the tapestry of our community. You had a lot of the first to come out here, first doctors, first scientists, African-American scientists, all out of this wonderful community in Tremaine. 
this is the bicentennial. I thought that I should pay tribute to it since I'm from New Orleans, and and it's it's um it's a historical time for celebrating our treasures. I'm so happy to be in this environment, beautiful environment, wonderful jazz, and showing my late husband's work. This particular photograph is called Couple in Raccoon Coats, and this is Van Der Zee's signature piece. It was taken in 1932, uh, right around the time of the uh, crash of the stock market. And here we have two people in raccoon coats in a Cadillac uh, that uh, certainly was an eye-opener. And here they were, they were, Van Der Zee called them hoofers because dancers were then called hoofers. So they were two hoofers and this is his signature piece and known, people know this image even though they may not know who actually took the image. Right now I learned to work with acrylics in terms of uh, the detail but it originally it was oil. But it always, you know, gives you a lot of time to play with, you know, before it dries. But this medium is, is, is bringing the acrylic out of me. So acrylic right now is the stage that I'm at. I'm trying to get back into the civil rights thing with a little, uh, you know, modern flavor in terms of the abstract. And I'm just having fun. You know, that's basically what it is, having fun with colors and, and using my creation to do something different. But tonight, it gave me another sense of the cultural experience that you can have, and that's the experience with the arts. And I met a lot of great artists here. Um, I can't decide, I'm not that versed yet, so I'm learning. My friend here knows a whole lot more about the arts, but I am learning a little bit more and I'm interested in getting a little bit more versed on it. Because I always think of this show, um, I've been attending this show for years, and I can actually thank the Black Fine Art Show for actually helping me learn about black art and art in general. I started just looking at art as an interest and it's become a fascination and I've started to collect slowly and surely. So I come here every year. It's a wonderful assemblage of artists, a wonderful assemblage of people, a wonderful assemblage of people of color and it's just something that our community should be aware of all the the beauty and art and all the beautiful artists that we have that come together in New York. Our quote of the week comes from a post on LinkedIn by Rakia Mays. The author is unknown. This is the quote. In the end we regret only the chances we didn't take, relationships we were afraid to have, and the decisions we waited too long to take. Thanks for that Rakia. All right. Well, what? that 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 is it. What is it? it? The over? show is over. Yes. Did you guys have a good time? Because I know I did. So did I. Time. Of good, course, I always good. do. That's mm -hmm. gonna do it for this week's edition of What's the Four One? Your smart source for urban lifestyle and entertainment news. Until next week, check out our website www.whatsthefourone.com. Check out our website, guys. Go to the website. Check it out. Share it. Yes. <laughs> and remember to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And subscribe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, What's the 4 in 1 TV. And all of you podcasters, because I know I'm loving podcasts now, right? Our podcast is dope. You can just listen to it on the train. So you can find our <laughs> podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, and tune in. Yes. Yes. I'm Kizzy Cox. And on behalf of Monique McLean, thank you for watching What's the 4 in 1. We will see you next time.